If you watched our draft analysis video for the BBR, you'll know that Mean Xiao was sniped from us in the later rounds of the draft. However, before the end of week four, Mean Xiao was dropped, and we jumped on the opportunity to drop Quagsire and Greedent to pick it up. Now that Mean Xiao is an official member of the Habsols, we're going to be taking it for a spin this week against the very player that stole it from us. Gentleman Thomas's team is filled with threats such as Gouging Fire, Ogre Pond Wellspring, Galarian Zapdos, and a Suncore, all of which have good reason to show up to this game. Can our build handle the heat? Let's get cooking. Spectrier looks really good here. It outright just forces prep that weakens Thomas's overall team structure into the other mons that we're bringing this week. Our speed eclipses Ogre Pond, Thomas's naturally fastest member, and our bulk allows us to take a Brave Bird after two rock switch-ins, while also allowing possible 1v1s into the Venusaur, Wigglytuff, and a weakened Overquill. To that end, we're bringing Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Draining Kiss on a Calm Mind variant with Citrus Berry to negate the initial strength of the attacks coming our way. Primarina gives us a, albeit flimsy, way to manage gouging fire. Simply a lefty's HP number with near max defense and speed to tackle paralyzed Ogre Pond. Moonblast hits the opposing team quite well and we're bringing Psychic Noise paired with Charm and Encore as a way to 1v1 a bulkier gouging fire. I'm just going to need to be wary of clicking Charm into a Galarian Zapdos switch in as that would trigger Defiant. Let's check out this Mean Xiao I was raving about in the intro. We'll be using Mean Xiao's most common set this week. Region and Choice Scarf. With enough speed for a Choice Scarf Galarian Zapdos and a new way to hit flying and ground types simultaneously. Triple Axle. Close combat and U-turn are staples and faint rounds out the set to get around a plus two plus two weakened gouging fire with burning bulwark teched on. I know it's niche, but I didn't see a better last move. This also plays around quick attack from Ogre Pond. I did say in our draft analysis video that the best way to surround Spectrier is with two fighting types. Enter, Terra, Poison, Scarf. Crafty. I feel like Poison is a better fit than Fairy this week as we want to overload the Overquill, being that it's the primary Spectrio check. Not to mention that Poison will resist Diancie's Moonblast and Zapdos's Choice Lock Close Combats. The latter forces us to ditch Intimidate this week, so we'll be using Moxie again on a Resto Chesto set, packing Bulk Up, Drain Punch, and Ice Punch. The EV spread allows us to tank hits from both sides, and a little bit of speed lets us creep Dawn Fan attempting to outspeed Scrafty, as well as paralyze gouging fire and a bulky Deancey. I keep mentioning paralysis, so it should be obvious at this point, but Thunderous will be coming again this week. I don't need him to do much here, but with his speed tier and ability to Thunder Wave anything that cares to switch into him, Thundee is too reliable not to bring. We're just maxing out on special attack and speed here to hit as hard as possible with Thunderbolt, Sludge Wave, and Flash Cannon. And of course, we'll be clicking Thunder Wave if we know we don't kill what's in front of us and know that we faint in return. Lastly, the mod that will be facilitating all these plays is our lead this week, Iron Treads. This set idea comes to us from my opponent a couple weeks ago in the TGS, Sean. If you saw that game, then you'll know that I struggled to deal with Sean's booster speed endeavor treads. This mon has a nasty habit of living super effective moves like Zapdos's Scarf Close Combat or Gouging Fire's Flare Blitz. This makes endeavor all the more powerful as these moves will leave us really low and in turn allow us to pick off an endeavored threat with Mean Xiao's U-Turn, for example. Supercell Slam may look strange, but it's actually a way to get our HP down low faster into the Dawn fan spamming rapid spin into our sub so that we can actually endeavor it into range of faint. And that's it. Let's get into the game. All right, we seriously need to start bouncing back in this league and we have five weeks to do it. So here's hoping that my very rushed prep can get us through this week. Although I'm not extremely confident, but I'm going to try to play my best here. About to queue up against Thomas. Here we go. Okay, so Thomas actually did me the courtesy of revealing his team, the six members that are going to be here. So they're actually already set on the layout. I just changed Ogre Pond for Ninetales because he's bringing Ninetales. Of course, I also revealed my six. So fair game. The Dawn fan's actually a little bit annoying for me on lead if it's like a very specific set. But I really do think that just getting up the rocks and trying to keep them up is going to be my ideal play. Maybe endeavor into a switch into my Spectrier, for example. Have my six locked in. Scrafty does look really good with Drain Punch plus Ice Punch. 
challenge. It looks like it can beat the entire team. Here we go. Let's show some sportsmanship. Wished him to have fun. So a little bit of good luck too, even though I'm the one that needs more luck than anyone. All right, here we go. We are going to lead off with treads. We are going to get our booster immediately. It is going to pop in speed. We are going to be faster than any variant of Zapdos and we shouldn't die to anything but choice band. So I'm just going to go for Stealth Rocks here. Should he click close combat? We should be really low enough to the point where we can just click Endeavor and be a massive threat. Now, Thomas could obviously hard switch into the Dawn Fan. Spec is not something I want to bring in on a full health Dawn Fan. I think that that's really stupid. Also, I have no way to touch the Dawn Fan outside of Endeavor. So we are going to set rocks. Let's see what Thomas chooses to go for. I'm assuming either U-turn or close combat here. And it is going to be close combat. We should live this unless it's banded. There we go. And this is a free Endeavor. No reason not to. The rocks are up. We're going to break Dawn Fan sturdy and maybe force it to go for a Ice Shard on the following turn. This is Kita, who is Kita. That is the Deancey, and the Deancey is going to go down to basically zero health here. Nice. And we are going to take Rocky Helmet, and we're going to double down here, which actually is not the worst. Because <laughs> now I can get in Thunderous and be a massive pain. Could also alternatively go Mean Shao, and I could also go into my Spectre to force in the Overquill. But I think I am going to go Mean Shao. I think that that is the best play, and I think we're just going to click U-Turn. Uh, obviously, the Dawn Fan can come in. Nine Tails alternatively could come in. The Deancey is going to go down here. So that's the Terramon gone. And everything comes in on rocks. So now we just got to decide what we're going into. We're going to take Helmet Chip, but we're going to get it back with Regen. So it, it doesn't matter. So I could go to... What does he have for its Overquill, right? For Primarina? So I think I am going to go to Thunderous here. Maybe I shouldn't have U-turned, actually. Yeah, let's go Thundy. He doesn't know if I'm Grass Knot, to be fair. Who's Kurama? That is the Nine Tails, interestingly enough. Is it Boots? It is boots. Okay. I don't have a great switch into this, all things considered. So I am just going to hit it. A strong enough attack could get me into Pattaya though, which could be huge. So let's just go for the Thunderbolt. He could just be getting up sun and go into Dawn Fan from here, but I'm not too worried about that because that's just like we're in the same position. So here's the Thunderbolt. It's going to do about 40%. Baton Pass is going to come out. So this is gouging fire, right? This turn so that the attack can go up. I'm going to T-wave that 100%. But we do know that the Zapdos has close combat. We do know that the Ninetales has Baton Pass. Here's gouging fire. Let's see what goes up. Attack. Okay, figured. This is heavy duty boots and this is not. So we are going to Thunder Wave this. Once it's paralyzed, it's not as much of a threat. We're constantly going to be able to outspeed it. There's the Paralysis. Heat Crash comes out. This is probably going to take me out. Yep. Let's just see if there's any chance that that was like had to be banded. 113 to 134. So yeah, no, that's definitely valid. So we'll go into Primarina here. Thanks to the Paralysis, we should actually be faster than this. We do know about the Gouging Fire that it has Heat Crash. Mm, he doesn't have great Moon Blast switch-ins actually. Moonblast is pretty free. So I am just going to Moonblast. I don't want the Zapdos coming in on a charm. I, I know the Zapdos is unlikely to come in. But we are faster than the moon. We get off decent damage. Here's Heat Crash. Okay, that did way too much. That is 100% banded. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 100% that's choice. Okay, so with that being said, I don't really need Prim. It's just for this. And now that I know that this is choice, I can just fire off another Moon Blast and be fine. Because this thing takes rocks. So it's not a problem. And if he switches out now, that's just good. It's a paralyzed... Uh, yeah, th th this doesn't matter. This is a paralyzed uh, gouging fire at like 20%. So I, that really doesn't bother me. Here is the nine tails. Okay, we're going to moon blast this. And I expect a, uh, we get a special attack drop, which is actually pretty big. Because right here, I can switch out into Mean Shao pretty much fearlessly. Flamethrower Burn or Will-O-Wisp would kind of suck. But I doubt you Will-O-Wisp this Mon. So I'm just going to go to Mean Shao. Hopefully on a Solar Beam is what I'm kind of expecting here. And any double here is covered by my switch into Mean Shao. We could sweep this game with Triple Axel, actually. Triple Axel looks really good. Because the, the Rocky Helmet Mon is dead. The Gouging Fire we had said was at like 40. I didn't actually check what it was at, but... Here comes Mean Shout. Here's Baton Pass. That's fine. We're probably going to see the Zapdos come in. I do KO if he's no investment. So I could U-turn first. That'll get the chip as well. Necessary to KO any kind of invested Zap. There goes the Sun. I think the play is to just click U-turn here because I do not want to lose to a Triple Axel whiff on the like damage. What do I have to revenge this anyway? It's literally just this. So I have to U-turn here. I have to go into Primarina. Should a Brave Bird come out, the recoil should result in a Triple Axel KO. So let's just go into Prim. Let's sack it. No problem here. 
And now we are going to click triple axel and get the KO, assuming we get every hit. Let's just hope we get the three hits. I know it looks like I'm, I'm down five to three, obviously, right now, but everything on his team is really weakened and we're looking really good for spec. I just need to get the overquill though. Okay, so this is a switch out. This should be the overquill. Oh no, it's the Dawn fan. Sweet. Okay. So we're going to get a damage off here. Triple one, two. Just two times. Okay, so I'm glad he switched out then. <laughs> okay, so that's lefty's Dawn fan. Um, oh, no, it's not. It's a Jack button. Hello. So what's coming in? Overquill? It's got to be Overquill, right? Nothing else can really comfortably come in here. I guess Ninetales kind of can. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing for the Scrafty endgame at this point. Here's the Ninetales. Now, the issue is if I go spec and he goes for the Baton Pass, I don't really have a switch into the Overquill. So I think it's actually worth it to triple axle this. And if it's anything but um, max special attack, it does not KO me here. So we're going to get the nine tails really low. We're probably going to see a baton pass. No, it's going to be a fire blast. This might cook me. That cooks me. Okay. So here is Spectrier. This should not get sacked here. So I am going to go for the Calm Mind. Yeah, I think Terra Poison Scrafty kind of just wins from here. Like there is still the Dawn Fan, obviously, to worry about, but... If I'm faster than the Dawn Fan, then it's GG, right? We're going to go for Calm Mind here. It should be the play. Stays in. Okay, interesting. We do have the Citrus Berry, so we're okay. Here is a Fire Blast. Let's see how much that does. Almost over half. It's really annoying that that didn't bring me down into Citrus. But yeah, I think I am good to Shadow Ball here. I'm already plus one, then I'm going to be plus two. Yeah, that and Draining Kiss should do a, a decent amount of damage, so we are just going to Shadow Ball here. Be a dead nine tails. There we go. Oh, right. He still has the uh, the Zapdos. That's right. Okay. And this thing is scarfed, obviously. So, yeah, that makes it all the worse why it's bad that uh, the Citrus Berry didn't pop. But we are going to go for the Draining Kiss on the off chance we live. Here's the Brave Bird. This should take me out. Now, Scrafty is our last, but I'm, I'm truly convinced that Scrafty wins this. So here comes Scrafty. And we are going to go for Terra Poison Bulk Up. We shouldn't take too much from the Brave Bird. So here we go. And the Zapdos we know, know has Brave Bird. Doesn't really change anything. So Terra Poison, there's the Brave Bird. How much does this do? Good amount, not enough. Here's the Bulk Up. Let's go for a rest. And then we're gonna Bulk Up again. I should be faster than the Dawn Fan. And the Overquill probably can't hit me too hard. There's Brave Bird, no crit, fantastic. We are gonna see more recoil. We are gonna see the rest from us. Does the Brave Bird recoil knock him out here? I doubt it does. So I'm tempted to actually just Drain Punch, but I think the second bulk up is quite necessary here. Now, Overquill can intimidate me, obviously, but it can't hit me that hard. So it's gotta be Dawn Fan or Bust. Now, if the Zapdos attacks one more time here, it's dead to rocks. It's currently sitting at 16%. He kind of needs a crit. That's like his only way out. I think this is a sweep if he doesn't crit me. Nice. It's good recoil. It's not enough to knock out the Zapdos, though. That's a little annoying. Not gonna lie. But we do get another bulk up. He took how much recoil there? He went from 16 to 9. Huh. Maybe the play is actually to rest here, because I don't think he actually dies from recoil. No, it took about half of what it had left in recoil. I'm gonna trust that this knocks me out. Not knocks me out, that this knocks him out. Good, good. Did it die? It didn't die. So what we can do is we can rest, but that's very scary. I think I just bulk up again. I should be faster than Dawn Fan, and Overquill should not be able to kill me with anything. I should also be faster than Gouging Fire. I am guaranteed faster than Gouging Fire. Cool. Still no crit. Dies to recoil, and we get off a final bulk up. I think we are plus four, plus four. And I should not die to uh, a Dawn Fan that's not max attack adamant either. Does 30% max. That's only max attack adamant that, that can kill me. Anything else can't. So we go for the Drain Punch. There's the Drain Punch. Not enough to KO him, but he shouldn't be able to KO me either. And this should be good health back. And we only take 30% here from Earthquake. Assuming no crit. Nice. There we go. And that's going to be another Drain Punch. Nothing comes in on this. This should die. And we should get our health back plus the Moxie boost to offset the Overquill's Intimidate. We should be faster than the Gouging Fire because it's parried. And that should be the game, guys. <laughs> I think we got this one. It's a narrow 1-0. There it is. 
Here's Gouging Fire. That is dead as well, and it is not faster than me. I thought I was in the red for a second. I was looking at the wrong HP bar, but we will Drain Punch. We are faster. We'll get another Moxie boost, and that should be a dead Overquill after the fact. There goes the Gouging Fire. Scrafty pulling off another four kill game then. I need to bring this thing every week. I, I need to bring this thing every week. It's got so many good sets, dude. Yeah, this is crazy. There's the Overquill. It does take the damage. Do we see Intimidate? We do. That's fine. We're still at plus five, I believe. I'm actually just going to check to be sure. Uh, that is plus five attack and plus four defense. Drain Punch, nothing is super effective against me. Here's Throat Chop. That does nothing. Here's the Drain Punch. Oof. Just lives. Okay, so if he can crit me, he might have a chance. But even then, I don't think a crit kills me. That's Drain Punch. That's the controller down. The throat chop does not crit, and ladies and gentlemen, we take week two. Week, week two. Week four. Week four against Gentleman Thomas. Great game. Really came down to the wire. One mon left. I truly believed in this Scrafty. I knew it would be able to win, and I played toward that. Needed to paralyze the Gouging Fire uh, to make sure that I could outspeed it and just dealt with everything else as best I could. The Citrus Berry not popping kind of sucked, but that was kind of my own doing by not just shadow balling and whatever, right? So yeah, there is that, but yeah, great game. GG's, Thomas, go and check him out in the description for me, guys. His link will be there, as well as all the other coaches in the BBR this season. Go and check out their content because they've been making great videos and they got great games and we are now two and two. So hopefully we can stabilize from here and make playoffs, but we'll see. We'll see how the, the rest of the season goes. I really like Mean Xiao and how it played out this game so i'm glad it, i picked that thing up and uh yeah that's it for week four guys thank you so much for watching i'll catch you guys later peace